expected. Coming into game number one, Nautilus, a Kali removed, along with Gragas. So probably Jace Bank would be good here, but they are going to ban Diego of uh, Nymeria. There was really that was really good of a performance when it comes to counter jungling plus handling most of the skirmishes para makuha niya talaga yung reset ng sovereign domination as ang alam pre hindi nila nagawa ng pagkakataon para ma-counter talaga despite the least impact with that, that heavy snowball of a champion but it was just good pacing plus uh, so much follow ups from the side laners kaya talaga nakalamang doon si Nymeria so good ban but probably it's going to be wise for them to ban a dragon laner that could read really, really uh, turn the tides of uh, the side of SSE probably Kaiser or even Ezreal at this point or consider that Draven is also one of the highly highly skilled champions but then again it's so rewarding for them to have a Draven that could really out dish so much of the enemy team but they're still going on the jungle route of banning up by yeah now the, now the big question is like what would the priority be for the side of sse because right now the bans are totally different from what we have seen prior and aatrox is definitely that strong powerhouse coming into the top side of the map if they want that extra sustain if they want to just leave the aatrox open but instead locks in onto ezreal okay so no fear for the Ezreal pick over here, they might just be able to utilize so much support plus a, a mid lane champion that could really hard counter this Ezreal. Probably a Cassidy, but they're going to opt for a Camille and they're going to do it. Go. The first two picks for Skeeta, like you forecasted a while ago, denying the Camille pick from the Skeeta was really smart for SSE. But because the fact that SSE was not able to uh, prioritize the Baron lane, they're going to use that combo now in game number two to hopefully alleviate uh, something that they were missing in game number one. Yeah, Hexic ultimatum onto the hero's entrance. A very classic combo that Skita is actually pouring out here for game number two that could really change the tides of the game with a huge amount of crowd control combo. But for the side of SSE, as we have mentioned prior, Aatrox will be the one stocked in on top side, a very sustainable champion, and Alistar will be next. Okay, so probably Brom could be answered back here by Skira. You know, there's so much mm. disengage that you could get from that Glacial Fissure from the Alistar plus the Aatrox. So adding that to, uh, despite the blank canvas of a Marksman here for Skira, they could utilize that Braum pick now or even pick a mid lane like Cassidy or even a Zoe, something that you could have a distance. But okay, Varus with no Inherit Escape other than the Summoner spell, it would be really hard for them to play around this Varus considering they already have a Galio that could possibly go support so they could have a flex of a mid lane. But with this ban, there is still a support plus a mid lane that could be banned out here by Skira. But they are going to ban Gwen. Oh, that Gwen is going to dish out so much value when she becomes a side lane. And they, thought, and they think that's what Skira forecasted for SSE. Now, for Skira, definitely uh, this will be a support Galio. We have the Varus coming down into the bottom lane as well. The reason for this is you have that reflection of that poke damage across these two teams, across these two compositions. So, regardless, Skira is not going to have a bad time coming down into the bottom lane. So, expecting expectations are going to be coming to game number two. That switch in lanes is no longer going to happen coming down into this matchup. However, coming down to the bands Ooh. here, Gwen, Garen removed along with Vladimir. Okay, so nice answer back from the Skita, uh, from Skita here, as the as the Garen ban was just really, really that uh, sought of here for Skita, considering man, there was uh, there was so much scarce uh, from uh, Tante's uh, from Tante's Garen because he was not meeting up enemies, but when there was a team fight, he was able to shred so much from Judgment plus a Demacia Injustice was a guaranteed kill because the follow was just too good for SSC to build a round of. It was an easy pick for them to get the Garen, but right now they're getting denied most of the pocket picks right now for SSE. Okay. So the jungle pick here for Skira, bakapad na lang uh, gamitin na lang yung Rengar o kaya yung Kazix para talaga makuha nila yung Ezreal dito. But then again, they are going to play around the snowball once again. Actually, very interesting because I was expecting a different jungle coming into the mids of Skira because you have to take note. That's Ezra we're talking about. That's Aatrox, that's Alistar. And the thing is, the Sin has to pinpoint these targets to the likes of Ezreal, which is so mobile into the game. So those Sonic Waves are not going to connect quite easily. And it's going to be a very difficult time for Skita to be able to do so. Now they have to back on to Gali's capability to go into those roams. That's the good side of things. That's the pros onto this composition wherein they have the least in for that extra engage tool for Gali to connect with the hero's entrance. But SSE now going for the Lucian, potentially going into the mid lane instead for this composition. And Skida could potentially answer with the J as well for that even matchup into the mid lane but instead could still opt to go for the court okay 
So, so much AoE right now here for Skira as they're going to opt for the quirky mid here. Regalio support It's going to be really nice for the dragon lane here in terms of the early game because when they were able to utilize the Shield of the Rand plus the Justice Punch, it's going to be really, really good uh, sets of kills here, especially when they do have that good amount of disengage to uh, even things out. So, napakaganda na talaga ng kalagayan din ng Skida pagdating sa dragon lane, but they have to have more aura plus presence with this Lee Sin because Fate was not able to do so much of the value that he was supposed to do as the jungler because there were no objectives there was no presence he was just getting counter jungled by Nymeria over and over again so right now this is going to be his redeeming factor is the fact that he has a reliable bot lane plus a guaranteed stun from the hook shot so this might just be a really nice in the day in the office here if you are a leasing player like fate now i want to talk about one of the perspectives here for the side of skida locking on the quirky instead of the jace because traditionally what you want is a lucian jace matchup regardless if it's mid lane or bot lane but traditionally from what we have seen prior into the few tournaments behind is that lucian and jace going into the mid lane however the reason why Corky is actually quite suitable as well, regardless onto the line of Skida, is because when we're looking at the composition onto the opposing side, you have Aatrox, you have Alistar, you have the likes of Jace. These are very defensive champions that could really just tank out the whole team coming onto those team fights. And Corky, as we all know, can shred those armors now. But I'm really, really excited for the SSE comp, considering they already have two so they have these two so-called healers of the team fight, but from what I'm seeing, this is just two picks that could really alter the situation, especially when you are entering into the mid game. The Jax and the Aatrox, in, a, in this combination, wherein it's going to be heavily dominated by the engage of both the Camille plus the Galio, and you already have such good engage from the Chains of Corruption at the Varus. Dito papasok talaga yung magandang value ng Counter Strike plus the World Ender because you're gonna get so much peeling power from your uh, from your tanks. Plus, uh, you're gonna dish out so much damage when you play out your lane so effectively. So I'm seeing this mix where in SSC is just playing the mind games here over to the draft, just feeling the feeling the nerve that okay, we should just pick the most open champion possible so we could get so much value out of this draft. So those, that's what uh, SSE really did, despite getting denied by their pocket picks because of the bans of the early phase of the banning phase. So now, Skira, what they're going to do now is probably play for picks before they do start the team fight because uh, as a unit, SSE is really, really strong. Yeah, and, and, and on top of what you mentioned, in terms of compatibility, in terms of winning conditions here, in terms of compositions, I gotta give it to Skida this time around as well, in, in terms of the aspect of SSE is banking onto the likes of Jax, Aatrox, and even Alistar to be their frontliners, and these are very bruiser type of uh, champions that they have in the bag. However, they have to take note that there is a Lee Sin on the opposing side. We've mentioned Lee Sin is not as good against the likes of the Ezreal, but considering how much bruisers are in the composition, of SSE, this just gives that extra favorability for that massive type of setup. On top of that, you also have the Gaio with a Shield of the Rand and the Hero's Entrance along with the Camille as well for that backline axis. So it will be a bit difficult for SSE to be able to really completely defend their backlines against this composition from Skida. Bibilitan talaga ano, nasabayan ng Skida yung Agus na hangin na binabato ngayon ng SSE which is indeed to be aggressive plus do not be hesitant on what uh, what kind of play are you going to do as long as you know that vision is going to be really really nice for you guys because from what I see Skida it's going to be really really good for their aura if they do have this sort of engage sort of heavy mindset especially when you have the camille plus the galio so you have to utilize that champion to the fullest in order to get that value out of the level ones two and three skirmishes if ever there's going to be ever gonna happen one no? so if SSE does really know how to read around the map, they can also counter with the good Lucian distance as he gets the DPS here. So once again, blank canvas, there's so much predictability here for both teams that are uh, that could really turn the tide of both Skida and SSE. But from what I'm seeing, this is uh, still uh, most likely you know, the momentum over to SSE. Plus, with their picks still being uh, more efficient in terms of damage, I'm seeing a very nice early game here for SSE. Yeah, surely. Uh, it's definitely like a, um, uh, there's a lot of pros and cons to consider for both of these sides. There's a lot of advantage, there's a lot of disadvantage. One of the disadvantages I want to talk about as well to consider to the side of SSE is that they have quite a bit of a monotonic type of setup. They have the Lucia and they have the Ezreal. These are the two main damage dealers for SSE side. And yes, there is, uh, 
there's an argument that Ezra could do a bit of a hybrid. They could go in for the Rift Maker and do a little bit more of that AP damage as well to consider. But definitely so, if you want to really bring out the most amount of damage to the likes of Ezra, you have to build at least a couple of AD items onto his back. So we'll see what SSE can do up against this lineup as we go to game two. Ladies and gentlemen, there was already some action, but we are not late into viewing. So, SC and Skida, Tonte already uh, putting his presence here in at the top side here with an early counter strike to, you know, dodge some hard hitting attacks from the precision protocol of Chicken Joyer. So, I am now, I am now enjoyed. Again, enjoy now ngayon because there's no more lane swaps here. It looks Pretty, pretty nice. Everything is now into full effect. We can now see more of the action now into what Wild Rift is supposed to be played at. Headbutt pulverize. Much of the combo you would actually see from an Alistair, but I do think it's one of those so called warning shots in the early game. Yeah. And I uh, na mentioned that kanina. during the draft, that's pretty much how like Skida is playing this how, in, in, in terms of the mind game. Like picking up the various means that they really want to go in a 1v1 type of setup and now Fate oh, goes in the was mid. A, that was a beautiful insect kick by Fate. There was no expectation from Akri. He wasn't able to Redless Pursuit or even flash out of that combo. My god, if there was an instant replay, we would like to see that over and over and over again. Even 70 times would be really, really nice. But wow, what an early start here by Skida. There's just no escape coming into Accurate's side. Yes, you have the flash available, you have the dash available coming into Illusion, but is that really going to be enough with a flash coming into Fate along with the Dragon's Rage and the Sonic Wave? There's just no time to be able to react. The likes of Aphrodite Battery is also piloting the likes of Corky with an extra burst of damage. But 30 seconds in, we're going to see the Hex Spirit come alive and also the Ice Drake come alive as well. So definitely con a contestion here with how SSC has been playing into the prior game, could be a Hexterate Pryo. Okay. lane swap, but I do think this is going to be more pressure over to the mid side with Skira going to be able to read this. But as you, as you can see, you know, Fate is already being proactive over here, just taking over mid and top side already, as his presence is now being sensed at here by SSE. As I do think with this objective, might just be a reaction here for Skira to be able to get that roam. But my kita mo, no, nandito na nag roam na rin dito si Akar. Probably going to the top side in order to get that possible team fight para kompleto sarkado si mga tao dito ng SSE. But this is going oh. to be a really, really bad setup as the Ice Dragon is now being taken down here by Skira with a very, very nice superior position. And there goes Shield of Turad. Dalawa yung mga tumakukuwang stun dito, but Fate will be escaping out. Using the safeguard, and here comes World End. That's what we're going to do. Miria, and Boy, and Skira. That's going to be one with three escaping for their lives as they get denied here of the Dragon Tick as SSE already taking over bottom side. Hmm, there's a bit of a mistake there. Faith actually went out of that matchup considering that Skida is still going ham onto those 5v5 clash that they were doing onto the Ice Drake objective and I think that huge loss of power onto the likes of a Dragon's Rage setup could lead them to turn things around unfortunately enough they did not go and commit it and now SSE is on the upper hand okay so Tante now Eyeing for this objective tape, but still no reaction here for Skira. Yes, there is fate over to the top side, but uh, Efren Barra Race is still clearing out top with little to no sandwich potential here. There goes a counter strike, and fate is just getting man handled here by Tante. And there goes uh, the Aatrox taking over that objective. And SSE does know how to manipulate that situation in order for them to have this favor. Yeah, Hex Mimic as well goes to the side of SSE. So that's two out of two objectives here in the first five minutes that will give them extra pushing power at this point. Considering as well the scaling prowess with the Ice streak that they have, extra ability haste going into their side. And on top of that, Tower First Blood into the mid lane to say the least gives them map control advantage. I'm seeing uh, Pabana dito, yung uh, dalawang member dito ng Skira in order to get the life probably of Akra. Meanwhile, Chicken Enjoyer now playing with a 1v2 over to the top side. Chicken Enjoyer, he gets the movement speed from Tactical Sweep. It's going to be enough for him to disengage the fight. So it was a, uh, it was such a ruse for the both, uh, both duo of SSE and Skira to play around both opposite sides of the map and not get anything from that one. Despite, you know, the guaranteed crack total that they could offer Tactical.
because he, there's really good damage disaster. Whips Night. once again the headbutt Soft. pulverized, but I do think it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be that much uh, of a very bad engage as as still they were able to get the SSE three two it was a very bad early game for them. And they were able to recover. Be back onto history. Game number one. It was SSE was able to take a three k gold advantage. Up against their opponents in eight minutes and this time once again it's happening all over once more those types of overextension regardless if you are you are an alistair is not a really a good option to do but now fate just pays a visit into the bot side of the map but will not commit <laughs> And there goes the Hexic Ultimate Dude. Desperation engage here. And there goes the Sonic Wave landed here by Fate as they get the life of Acker. Gonna be a 4v5 over the bottom side as the fight is still insinuating with the world. And they're by Nymeria as they're getting ganged down here by the four members. Many superior members of Skira taking over the bottom side. But there was no reaction here for SSE to get the counter engage. Oh, mid. They were they were paying the price of their position as Acker gets taken down plus the bottom side tower. Yeah, mid is actually being taken down as well. SSE wants that push. They're able to take the tier two. And I reckon that's more of a bigger advantage. They have full control now of the upper and right quadrant jungle. Okay. Tante and uh, Nymeria. Taking over the top side once again. Disaster the third time already. Shown on cam. You need to hit those combos, buddy, if you want to get a good follow-up from Tactical F and Battle Race and Fate playing a very, very cheeky game over to the life of Acker once again. It's gonna be a very, very bad situation for hey, Acker. You're gonna experience a black and white screen once again. Sonic Wave hits, and there goes the resonating strike. Oh my god. Skira just hitting those combos really nicely as they get the bounty of Acker over and over again. That's really good. This is the power that we're looking for coming in from Ali Sin. 005 actually just states how much pressure he's putting out here in this early game. And that is what you want with Ali Sin to be able to snowball this game out of proportion. However, despite those kills, despite having a kill advantage, you still have to consider that SSE has the two objectives prior from the five minutes. And you also have three turrets in their favor as well. So this pretty much just gives and is the reason why they have so much more of a bigger lead compared to Skidda. Okay. This current situation, there has to be like a resurgence here for SSE because Akar is always always getting picked off. There there is no counter engage or even like the presence of a possible team fight for SSE. They're just playing around the snowball on what the Skeeter was Nymeria. trying to play a while ago. But oh my god, the color is just too good. And Nymeria goes over to the wall to get this 2v1 intact. Akar is so close to dying. He gets the precision protocol bonus proc. My god, chicken enjoyer would have been very dirty, but it gets the one for one by bottom side already being taken over here by Skeeter as there's so many red health bars. And there goes a flash away here by Disaster. The dragon already being taken down here by Skeeta. As three members make it too tactical. Very, very aggressive. But if Disaster now running away, SSE not connecting the plays anymore. Skeeta is now the owners of the map. Well, a bit unfortunate coming to the side of Skeeta with that one for one trade, considering that Chicken Enjoyer was 4 0 0 prior from that engage. And it was. Um, SSE who was able to get that bounty and the Ocean Drake to consider. However, SSE, regardless of that, is still putting up a punch up against them nevertheless. And this is the problem that we've mentioned prior. Skeeta has so much engaged tools in their lineup, in their composition, especially with the likes of the Galio being that forefront, being the key here with the hero's entrance as a follow-up. So we'll see what they can do at this point in time as once again, Fate has the ultimate up and running. Instead of playing around the pokes, the rest of SSE here trying to play around the team fight despite, you know, there is a lack of, uh, there's a lack of strength over to their itemizations here with Skida already having the much more superior path as, as both the top and the jungler now closing into their second items which could really derail the life of uh, both the squishiest targets here of SSE. Skida now on the top side with headbutt and pulverize two man knockup over here and tactical now makes his way to the top side to get more damage out of the engage from disaster it's going to be disastrous from the engage of the alistar but they're world going to ended. turn things around with a kill over to fate there goes the world ender can it do, can it deal so much value though nymeria down to one hp they're gonna get one for their own tower with the top side skita still playing the mind games 
Yeah, it's just too much. In terms of the aspect of SSE, while Skida is slowly building up the items into scale, with Quirky now building up onto the Tri the Trinity Force and loss of the various their damage is going to be much bigger from here on forward. And this is just a huge problem because Skida just has to buy AD resistance. And at that point, they're pretty much secured up against the likes of Tactical and Hacker. Parang na kailangan itrabaho talaga ano ng SSC. They are working really hard in order for them to even survive in a team fight. Look at Skida is now giving us a series, ladies and gentlemen. Early true shot barrage to get that prior over to the mid side, hopefully. But there is a very very scary presence between Disaster. the two targets here of Skida. Two champions that could really deal do damage and SSE with an engage. They are just chunking down the life of the Scalio as they disengage over to fate as they get the headbutt out. Uh, and there was a, there was a fear that what we, what we were doing is just too much. And Chicken Enjoyer enjoying his presence here over to the bottom side. But that's not going to be a follow up here. Askira is just getting ran over right now by SSE in this current situation as SSE is fine for a comeback. Yeah, so far so good for the likes of Skida. After the bringing out the Triforce as well, along with a Yumus Ghost Blade tradition from what we have seen for the likes of, of the Sin player, that uh, Guardian Angel actually proves a lot of benefit considering how squishy a Lee Sin can be. But considering how much this damage items are going to side of the jungler of Skida, this actually just states how aggressive they want to be here in this game. Going disaster now on mid side. Meanwhile, they have to be careful of Chicken Joyer. This man does really know how to siege towers fast, especially from the value he gets from the Divine Thunder and the Precision Protocol. But this is eat with a very risky Baron play here. This could be a power play here over to Skida to get that possible steal to man uh, knock up here over to the back side as Faith and uh, the rest of the crew here once again inside of the Baron pit. But they're going to get denied here. So much damage over to the Aatrox. Plus Tante as they're going to disengage. Finally, Fate Massive. with the Dragon's Rage as oh my god, Acker gets melted out of the fight. Skida secures a double kill for the Camille with a very well placed presence by Chicken Joyer as they're now inside of the Baron pit and they most likely will get the Baron. Yeah, they, they need Serpent's Fang at this point. SSE cannot handle the Gargoyle Enchant coming in from the likes of the. Uh, uh the galio and they, they constantly put the target on him first which is a big question mark considering how he is building up to the tank build tank items onto his galio and at that point it's just a huge mistake from there on there on forward and this is what we have mentioned during our draft here uh salvatore when it comes to the damage output when it comes to the composition skida has it in the bag and they're able to just utilize this type of composition up against sse with a monotonic comp yeah oh my god uh, nymeria is no longer in the fight uh, this is going to be a 4v5 to defend the base of ss the hexic t-rex just doing so much damage over to the front side as a disaster will be popping the unbreakable will to get it. some peeling over to the back side and taunte is just separated from his teammates to make this a 3v1 counter-strike desperation engage over to send mode but he's getting chunked down despite the stone plate enchantment and everyone just running from sse Eskida is taking over the tier 2 tower plus this inhibitor tower momentarily as it now opens up the base of sse a uh, huge problem now for the side of SSE. Skida just now have to focus in on the types of building of tanky items. And honestly, SSE, if they opted to go for a different route, not as a focus fire on the likes of Galio, they could definitely be uh, a huge threat. Especially considering that Corky doesn't exactly have the most mobility and Varus has no mobility at all. So these two targets are going to be key here for SSE. God. SSE could just hope to get something out of this map, but they're just watching everything that Skida is destroying. Dragon, Baron, Towers, Lives of Acker and Nymeria just going into the oblivion here with Acker, despite the mobility of the Lucian given. Plus, he was able to move and get some damage done. There was nothing that he could possibly flip out for because Fate and Chicken Joy, despite playing as bruisers, are so tanky with it. So with this level lead plus uh, the objectives that Skeeter are taking, they're just in it to win it, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's good. Right now, Tactical going in for a different route, now going in for the Rift Maker. We also mentioned this a while ago. They need that hybrid type of damage. They need that extra bit of uh, a different route in terms of that damage pad as well because just building here onto the armor for a Skida would give them so much benefit into those team fight, and even then, 
now going to be harder and harder as Gida starts to scale up much bigger. If we're looking at Efren Bata Reyes at this point, all real, already opting onto that fourth item build with 13k in his bag. Now, members of Skira now pushing over to the mid side to get the Prayo so that they could shift over to the bottom side, which is going to be the dragon here. It's going to be alive anytime soon here with under 25 now. With SSC still trying to clear out those super minions over to the mid before they're able to maneuver themselves into the bottom side. So, SSE, this is most likely going to be the last team fight. It's either they give out Dragon or they find Skira lacking and get that 4v5 and hopefully get that scaling plus the team fight. So now, it's going to be the Elder Dragon. This could really, really benefit whoever is going to get it. But with Skira's positioning, items, and pressure, they have to get this in order to take over the game. Yeah, either team would have that huge death threat up against their opponents. But Skida SSE starting it off with some good pokes over to the Galio. But the Winds of War is going to put them some form of distance and spacing in order for Skida to get a much more favorable position. And SSE still really scared. Oh, they get that 50 50. It's going to all boil down to the umbral dash of Nightmare over to the wall. He has smite. He has flash up. Everything is complete for the members of SSE in order to make this a 50 50, not on 100 to 0 over to Skida and Fate. Trying his best to get that execute damage from the resonating strike, and there goes Shot Barrage. Not gonna have much value, but there goes Engage from the Alistair as he gets a Justice Punch. And there goes the Headbutt over oh. back to the team, but that's a huge shield over the Stone Plate Enchantment. Two months over to the backside, and there goes every Battle Race really heating up with it from the damage. There goes a Cannon Barrage. Oh my god, just doing They're so bad. much damage from the ultis, and there's no more Dragon to take for Skida, just the lies of the SSE. Askida takes over mid side plus the life of Nymeria. It's going to be a 4v5. And Skida goes back to where they came from, and that's the Elder Dragon. Yeah, and this is now going to be a huge problem. The Sasker has to delay it. And at that point, there's no jungler to the side of SSE. So, regardless, they have to make a miracle play because Elder Dragon, if it goes to Skida, it's over. Oh my god, man. This is really, really getting dirty up in this, man. Because uh, there's nothing SSE could do. They're just watching doing everything that they can to possibly survive and even get, put this game into a longer reach. Entering into the 20-minute mark anytime, uh, shorter soon, Skira, after they were able to get that Elder Dragon, for sure they're going to get this Baron, right? Yeah, there's just no threat. Nightmare is still not available. Five seconds still before their jungle comes up. And they could definitely not go for it. If they commit into that contest, it's pretty much over for SSE with no inhib turret left in the mid lane with two super minion waves already pouring in as well. It's just such a dangerous position. Now they just have to defend. Okay. Most members here of Skira, except Chicken Joyer, because of course, it's the Baron Lane. Gonna put some uh, pressure over to the other sides of the map. Nymeria with, en with an engage, but the hero's entrance will be used as an escape mechanism. But oh my god, Taunte gets melted out because of that piercing arrow. And they do not respect the Elder Dragon buff over here, Infinity. And Skira gets one with four members still guarding as walls over to the base of SSE. Oh, there's good. SSE is actually cutting down the wave. So there's just a huge opportunity now for SSE to delay. They're buying so much time. Only two minions pouring in onto the base, but now Aatrox has to retreat to defend the base. But Skida has a stacked minion wave over to the bottom side. A good position here by Chicken Joyer. And that opens up mid and bottom. Disaster. Protobel enchantment now popped in. Hextech ultimatum over to the support. And they're going to lock down the support of SSE. They're already deep into oh. enemy lines. But their focus is the victory. And the Nexus Skida ties up the series one to one. What a game of perseverance from both sides i mean skida at that point was able to turn things around and that's just pretty much like how composition worked for